this is the different power of the legislature then power to make laws so even this power in the present case was exercised by the parliament now my lord i am before i take my lord the last leg of my otherwise in the absence of the suspension of the proviso what would happen was that the parliament is exercising all the powers of the legislature of the state it would give its views on it and it would also enact the bill yes that's the let's the constitution so that's that's your answer to the challenge that there is duality is missing in this case because you say when article 356 is invoked and and we have been and the proviso is suspended there are instances in the past where in it was this argument of duality was rejected yes but well, I, i can well, take directly your lordships too or no, we we'll come to that you take go in your own way no otherwise well, uh, justice hr kanna's judgment on this as a delhi high court uh, uh, well, uh, as, uh, in delhi high court is directly on the point and explanation and and well, the interpretation of article 3 by a constitution bench in mangals that also well, not concern uh, punjab that this very reorganization which was under 356 and the power exercised by parliament as a legislature but in punjab incidentally even views were not taken of the parliament as a legislature saying that the assembly is suspended so straight away the reorganization bill was passed as a reorganization but this is interesting and i'll i'll show that judgment what happened was in the erstwhile state of punjab but for example there were 85 seats of mlas now some portion goes so 85 became 70 the remaining 15 challenge them that how how have you how have you taken away our right to continue as members of the legislative assembly and the number was lower than even minimum prescribed for any assembly to have and then the question arose about article 4 that you can make incidental provisions which might even amount to amending the constitution but would not be treated as amendment of the constitution constitution bench of your lords Mr. Solicitor, Mr. Solicitor, you have referred to the fact that there is a practice, a constitutional practice, that during the operation of a proclamation under 356, the proviso to Article 3 has been suspended, uh, and you have said that that is obviated by the reason that if you don't do if you don't do so, and the legislature is only in a state of suspended animation and not dissolved, the legislature may conceivably meet to express its view to obviate that. parliament uh, the presidential proclamation does this but none of this this constitutional practice cannot obviate the legality of what is done right but here here in the present case even the views are taken but views are given by the parliament as a legislation in punjab that was not the case so parliament would then give the views to itself and it would also enact the legislation for reorganization yes but that's the inevitable consequence but would that really be consistent with the federal for the federal doctrine i will doctrine? show that i will show that but it does not destroy federalism at all i'll be able to satisfy a lot of it i'm just but since we are discussing this i have not taken up the point of state reorganization no like right, but you are saying that yes but since we were not uh, answering i was answering the proviso to article 3 which came with 356 but i'm reading this then Okay. Not in both the cases, the views were not taken. Possibly, it takes into account sometimes there may be a breakdown of constitutional machinery within the state when the reorganization is. It's the solution when there is a. Malod, kindly appreciate, Malod, by this, Malod. I'm sorry, not kindly, Malod, consider this. Malod, when the reason for imposition of the precedent rule is such. that to bring that state out of the situation which resulted into imposition of precedence rule maybe state requires to be reorganized then my lord the position cannot continue as it is the president of india can take a call that the only solution of the problem is reorganization of the state and your lordships are my lord uh, under my lord uh, the arguments repeatedly advanced was that there is a retrograde step we were uh, brought down from state to uh, ut state i will show a lot from the reorganization it's a state for all purpose it it's a state with legislature with only power of police with the president it's a detailed state reorganization everything was factually wrong that my consolidated fund has gone my representation in parliament has gone my election voting in president's election is gone specific uh, st statutory provisions are made gst council is gone look these are the arguments which were so but i am coming to that reorganization the ut look is essentially as much a part of federal structure as 
any other state in a given set of facts lord your lordship say lord i I'm, i don't want to jumble up lord my submissions but there are some lord submissions what would be the contours of your lordship's examination once your lordship finds that 356 exercise was not to be faulted with what happens thereafter there would be a restricted scope of judicial review that's what bomai has said it's a narrow compass doctrine no your lordships are aware no lord i i'll take your lordship through them some situations where it is necessary that for some time this remains under union as union territory and the honorable home minister on the floor of the house has said that this is a temporary measure ultimately it will become a state but that's a separate argument but i'll come to that this so this uh, uh, this may be your answer as far as ladakh is concerned but converting jnk into a union territory what has been argued by the other side is this downgrading i must meet with them that argument you number 1 number 2 is article 356 the maximum tenure as prescribed is 3 years we have crossed those 3 years uh, at the time of my lord uh, i i'll answer that my lord but 2019 we we have not and thereafter my lord we are in a different regime so i know now as a union territory that 356 that part will not apply it's because union territory is something that is, is my lord therefore my lord but uh, but but if it was not a union territory then it that would have crossed it would have crossed by now but but for the intervention of 5th and 6th august 2019 yes but that that is yes yeah, yes and my lord but sadri riyasat had already gone right yes yes ma'am. so then what is the need for bringing this in in 1966 no i'm sorry sadri riyasat went here Oh, it went here. That's right. Yes. Earlier, the amendment was Sadre Riyasat acting on the advice of the Council of Ministers. Earlier, it was individual capacity. Then it became acting yes. on the advice of Council of Ministers. Here, now the Sadre Riyasat is replaced by Governor. Governor acting on the right. advice. Yes, sir. But the, the the fact, however, remains that in so far as J N K is concerned, J N K bucked that trend. JNK went to the 370 route. Oh. Yes, my lord. But why? How? And till what time? Right. That will come, my lord. Subsequent. Right. And that's why, my lord, for me, as I stated, said, my lord, in the outset, connecting the dots would be necessary. The instruments of accession of various princely states contain certain reservations. Now we have seen in regard to taxation, in regard to land acquisition. Uh, binding constitution. Binding, not binding themselves to accepting a future constitution. so the ioas at that point of these states were hedged with various conditions this is also but that was consistent with section 6 of the government of india act which was adopted by section 9 of the uh, indian independence act no, sir. we gave this soft to the princely rulers that look you come here on your terms we are not telling you today to come on our terms you agree to the indian union you make reservations and we hope that by and by you will accept full integration into the union which they did there was an argument that instrument of merger was a necessary uh, attribute for a complete integration otherwise we had kind of an internal sovereign your lordship would recall that jammu and kashmir never signed instrument of merger many states did not sign in instrument of merger from the date on which constitution of india came into force and article 1 came into force as an act of the state they became part integral part of union of india and how jammu and kashmir got separated my lord and how it was only for a temporary period but would succinctly come lord in subsequent interesting mr solicitor this department of states which existed in the ministry of home affairs post 1950 after the seventh amendment the seventh amendment right 1956 to 38 was yes so the department of states must have been abolished post 1956 you will be still having records in the ministry of home affairs i'm sorry my lord my instructions are not the officer sitting my lord was the additional secretary in charge of jammu kashmir in mha that the, he said that department technically still continues so department of states still continues still continues now do we have i am not sure whether this can exercise can be done just for i mean if you don't have to do it by a very detailed document by just a tabulation if we can have a list of the states and you know the we can have say kathiawar instrument of accession supplementary instrument of accession and merger agreement which of the states came into the union with a merger agreement which of the states had no merger agreement at all and yet joined the union 
I don't know whether that now at this point of time that record will be there. If you can, if you can try and record, if you can, a sort of to a large extent, white paper indicates what happened. I don't know if you have that record. I mean, how many out of these five sixty-two who actually joined the Indian Union, the Union of India, actually executed merger agreements? Thank you. What happened? What I meant was, how many of these states which joined the Union of India? Did not execute merger agreements. Right. That will be a smaller group, probably. But possibly, possibly. So, which which will then perhaps give some support to your argument that the execution of a merger agreement was not quintessential to acceptance of ultimate sovereignty by India. And second, many states, many princely states, were subsumed with the Union of India even without a merger right. agreement. And various states, therefore, were subsumed in the Union of India only with an instrument of accession. We will do that exercise. Substantially, everything is there in the white paper. But if there is nothing else, also, all five sixty-two states are not in the what happened. No, they were small little principalities, small nawabs. They got they were larger. We were just, in fact, Brother Surya Kant was giving us a little bit of uh, so backdrop about uh, Punjab and Himachal. So integration with larger states, and then the larger one find find the instrument of merger. Federation, right? But we were wondering, was it possible? Because uh, Mr. Sibyl, what we want a little bit of this no, factual. I understood, Mr. Factual clarity, factual clarity. That they may have were there Indian states. We shouldn't call them princely states because, as Mr. Sibyl says, some of the small nawab, some the princes. We will have to tell uh, say. Princely states, because Indian state would mean those which the governors the provinces. sovereignty or suzerainty of British, British India. That's they how were, it has they were the governors been provinces. That's right, that's right. No, but we we just want to know this. We will Malad, undertake to, again to sort of repeat two things. Which were the states which accepted completely the, uh, the, the to be subsumed within the Union of India without merger agreements? And followed only the IOA course, and straight came into the Union of India. In no such instance, but respect the white paper, which is part of the record. White no, paper is written by Sir Patel. And I, I will not uh, formulate. It. I have understood the question. Let let me not. You know, Mr. Shankar, I, I just thought since the department there, there is a since the Department of State since the Department of State exists even today. This something. This will be. They might take a day or two days, but they will be able to do it. It would be Malad. It would be done. They take the table here, but the states which have not entered into a merger. It's helping your point. Actually, if you want the list of states which have what not. What is the source? What is the source of your table? It's from the white paper. White paper. White paper. There are. In actual I'll put it that way. So there are states which did not accept the merger and yet became a part of the Indian Union. Yeah, but in state, state of Malad, state of Mysore, state of Mysore, state of Saurashtra pre-independence. Uh, Madhya Bharat, Patiala, and East Punjab. This is and this is part from from white paper. There is a chart. So we 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 will not that. Let's not not uh, deviate from this. I I have under, not taken uh, the point. Your point is that there were other states, basically whether it was two, three, four, five, whatever. So there were other states mm -hmm. which did not sign the merger agreement. Yeah. Yes, there was and nothing special which is being claimed. That's and, your point. Just and point. and second. That merger was such a sine qua non, without which you can never be an integral part of India, either under Article One or otherwise, or your special status must continue.